Okay, the first thing to say is to apologise for the sheer cheek of some upstart limey like me commenting on the election in America. But I have to say something because I'm sitting here in shocked astonishment looking at what appears to be an engineered, tyrannical coup d'etat against not just President Trump, but against the very ideal of democracy itself. And I'm not going to go into the details of the issues of corruption and fraud surrounding this election because uh, those details are many and some are already in the public domain anyway. I'm simply going to observe that this is a monumental moment, uh, not just in the history of America, but in the history of the world, and a monumentally catastrophic moment in terms of freedom, democracy, morality, decency and honesty. And those who understand what's actually happening don't need the whole thing spelled out to them. But those who think nothing terribly untoward is happening, uh, other than that President Trump is behaving badly, uh, should listen carefully. Very, very carefully. The world outside the democratic West is a very brutal place. No left-leaning liberal would wish to live in Saudi Arabia or Sierra Leone or countless other such places. No left-leaning liberal would wish to have lived in Europe during most of the decades of the 20th century, uh, which saw so much devastation and death, courtesy of political totalitarians seeking nothing more than power and nothing other than power. And these corrupt totalitarian systems were finally defeated because America fought on the right side of good against evil, of freedom against tyranny, and did so at great sacrifice in terms of the many young men who never made it home again, who died in foreign fields and foreign seas in order to preserve freedom and democracy. Yet here we are, towards the end of 2020, looking at the very real possibility of the breakdown of democracy in America itself. And what would have been unthinkable for so long over so many generations of Americans can no longer be considered unthinkable. And if this gross subversion of democracy is not dealt with in a satisfactory manner by the lawyers, then I see no reason why America should not descend into violence and potential civil war in the worst case scenario, or simply lose all confidence in any future elections as a best case scenario, which can only and inexorably lead to the worst case scenario again. Now, young left-wing Americans will consider such a viewpoint insane, but they know little of the brutality of the non-democratic parts of the world, and little about why that brutality never encroached upon their decadent lives. They know nothing about Nazism, Fascism, Socialism or Communism. Indeed, they believe President Trump and the people who admire and respect President Trump are Nazis and Fascists all, whilst they believe Socialism and Communism to be pure and good. And this type of brainwashed ignorance is extraordinarily dangerous in a people of any country, because no matter their ignorance and no matter how wrong they are, they truly believe they're standing up for what is good and right and moral, and because they feel that they and they alone hold the moral high ground, then all who oppose them are not just wrong, they're evil. And when it comes to evil and the defeat of evil, then the end justifies the means. Just as so many people amongst so many previous generations have similarly believed, which is why the history book of the world is a history book of war, horror and atrocity. And what we're looking at today in America is just another iteration of purported good versus purported evil where the end justifies the means. President Trump is evil and must be removed, screamed the left. But lacking the democratic means to remove him, he must instead be removed by any means necessary because the end justifies the means. And these foolish, spoiled, decadent, ignorant little children in adult bodies who are right now engineering a coup d'etat to remove President Trump are playing with fire. 
in their hazy, fuddled, naive, closed-minded thinking, they feel there'll be no real-world consequences resulting from their action. Their naivety is dangerously unlike the pragmatism of revolutionaries in the brutal and undemocratic parts of the world who know full well that if they fail in their coup, they will be killed. And if they win, uh, they will do the killing. Destroying the democratic foundations of America will certainly have real world consequences. When Donald Trump won the presidency in 2016, the far left cried Russian collusion and displayed their hatred across the entire left wing spectrum. spectrum. Uh, but their anger wasn't based on the undermining of democracy. Their anger was merely that of the petulant, spoiled child denied a shiny bauble. Their anger was lukewarm, it was false, it was unjustifiable. Their anger was mere political posturing. And now they think the anger of Trump supporters is the same, mere political posturing. But how wrong they are, how dangerously wrong they are. The anger of Trump supporters is white hot. It is incendiary, it is real, and it is entirely, eminently justifiable. And it's not the anger of the loser, it's the anger of the wronged. And it's about so much more than Trump. This is about the democratic future of the United States of America. When a country reaches the point of such legal corruption and moral degeneracy that democracy can be overturned in full view of a complicit and unquestioning media and liberal establishment, there's very little guarantee that that democracy will ever recover. And this is why the anger is at boiling point, and even now the left cannot understand what they've done. Before we settled into peaceful democratic nations, power was decided by kings, swords and armies. Power rested with battle and bloody victory. Democratic politics replaced battle and war in the West, but it's always been understood that democratic politics is war by other means, and that if democracy is removed from politics, then we can only go back to bloody battle and bloody war. And the trouble with the left wing, especially the young and cosseted, who have never experienced the horrors of war, is that they don't understand this simple premise. They don't understand the importance of democracy, so they cannot appreciate the volcanic anger amongst those who would peacefully yet unhappily accept a fair political defeat, but who will never accept defeat if it comes from the grinding jackboot of a subverted democracy. You know, when one local gang squares off with another gang, the violence is quickly over. But when one half of a country squares off with the other, the violence is slow in the beginning, but just as in 1990s Yugoslavia, the levels of violence and tit-for-tat reprisals build and build until finally a genuine civil war breaks out in all its primeval savagery and mass slaughter. And I don't need to spell out the numbers of Americans with guns, but I do need, apparently, to point out that the anger of millions of armed Americans is being stoked to dangerous levels and that these angry people are justifiably enraged. Now, many of you watching this video will hear my words resonate with your thoughts. And many supporters of the Second Amendment will right now be saying that the main overriding reason for the Second Amendment is not to shoot deer, but to defend America against a tyrannical government. So perhaps now is a good moment to say that in times of war, our dead soldiers are always politely remembered for having died in the defence of democracy. But the dying part was never their intention. Their intention was to very impolitely kill the aggressors who wanted to impose a tyranny upon them. And here we are today, in late 2020, looking at a scenario which consists of a tyrannical coup d'etat in the face of a hundred million armed and angry Americans who are convinced their democratic rights have been trampled upon and subverted. Now, I hope and pray this will be resolved by the legal process, but I implore 
the Democrats, the left-wingers, the socialists and the communists to stop pretending that what you have done is acceptable. It is not, and the consequences could be catastrophic, both for you, for America and for the world. You are amongst the luckiest people ever to have existed on this planet. You represent a fleeting moment in time when you can live as no people before you have ever lived, yet still you are unhappy. Cut off and cosseted from a world of brutality and poverty and misery, you exist at the furthest extremity of decadence, where your immense good fortune goes unrecognised and is instead replaced with a misplaced sense of bitterness and envy and hatred. You live in a wonderful country at a time of never seen before peace and prosperity, of freedom and democracy. Yet you are now engaged in an action that could bring about the horrors of 20th century Europe. I am, as I say, an upstart limey, but this upstart limey is filled with a sense of intense foreboding. And I beg the left to stop what they're doing before the unthinkable becomes a physical reality. If you overturn democracy in America, then America will become just another part of the brutal, undemocratic world. And if that happens, nothing will ever, ever be the same again.